Well, <laughs> that happened. But rest assured, I haven't let my newfound internet stardom go to my head. No, sir. I'm still the same old scouser with two feet on the ground. Call it, take it quickly, Origi! Yeah! Um, I mean, it's not like I have much else to be smug about. <coughs> Sorry about that. I don't know what came over me. All right, all right, calm down, calm down. Let's get serious for a sec. I just want to say thank you to everyone who liked, subscribed, and left a comment on my One Marvelous Scene video. It genuinely meant the world to me. So much so that I've been terrified to make another video. But as the dutiful, down-to-earth, desperate-for-attention YouTuber that I am, I'm making another video for all you loyal subscribers. What can I say except you're welcome? The only question that remained, how do I follow up a video like that? Do I go for the guaranteed clicks and keep up the I Love Marvel vibes and become a full-blown Disney shill? Eh. Do I spend 40 minutes shitting on Game of Thrones just like the rest of the internet and embrace the life of an entitled fanboy? Nah. Or do I say, fuck it, and discuss a show nobody talked about at the time and very few people have talked about since? I don't find you that interesting. You will. Yeah, that'll keep the subs coming in. So today I'm going to talk about one of the most criminally underrated shows ever to put to TV. Black Sail. No, I mean, The Leftover. Fuck, I mean, Hannibal. Hannibal. Definitely Hannibal. Before we begin, you must all be warned. Nothing here is vegetarian. Now, there's a lot of things that make Hannibal great. The writing, the score, the acting, the fact that all the food makes me so goddamn hungry. But instead, I want to talk about how Hannibal nails the golden rule of film and TV. Show, don't tell. In a video essay I've called Visceral Storytelling, The Art of Hannibal. It's a little hammy, Jack. True. But well, Hannibal's not exactly gonna kill it with the clickbait, so might as well ham it up. Plenty of other great shows use the camera to tell their stories. They wouldn't be considered great if they didn't, but in my humble opinion, and as a straight white male film student on the internet, my opinion is basically gospel. No other show does it as well as Hannibal. The grotesque beauty of Hannibal does more than just tell a story. It shows off the character, narrative progression, and the show's theme perfectly. My compliments to the chef. So pull up a chair, pick up your knife and fork, and keep your elbows off the table. Leaves the table. Because dinner is about to be served. Oh, and spoiler alert for season one. I actually want people to go back and watch the show, so I won't spoil anything from the magnificent second and third seasons. So just go watch it. I mean, I would. Wouldn't you? Before we get started, I'll give a brief recap. Our protagonist is Will Graham, an FBI consultant who has a rare gift of being able to empathise with anyone, including sociopathic serial killers. A unique cocktail of personality disorders and neuroses that make you a highly skilled profiler. But this comes at the cost of his stable mental state. To keep him in check, the FBI hire Dr. Hannibal Lecter to be a psychiatrist and help him work through these issues. But with every blood-curdling crime scene Will visits, the line between the killers and himself begins to blur. You catch these killers by getting into their heads. But you also allow them into your own. And with all that in mind, let's start with the appetizer, shall we? Don't psychoanalyze me. You won't like me when I'm psychoanalyzed. Not content to have Will simply explain the M.O. of the killers. In every episode, we see him reenact the murders in his mind. The pilot opens with this to emphasise the importance of and the difference between these two planes of reality, the real world and Will's headspace. In the real world, the colour palette is muted and cold, emphasising the lifelessness of the scene in the aftermath of the violence. But when we step inside Will's headspace, the colours become more saturated, ironically making the scene feel more alive and conveying a morbid sense of warmth. On a superficial level, this creates a visual difference to how the change between the reality and the reconstruction. But from a character perspective, this change is very telling. The devil is in the details. The warmth of Will's reconstruction suggests that he's far more comfortable isolated in his own headspace than he is in the real world surrounded by people. My horse is hitched to a post that is closer to Asperger's and autistics than narcissists and sociopaths. And this comfort, or lack thereof, is evident in both the colour palette and the framing of each shot. The difference in intimacy between this and this is self-evident, with Will isolated in medium shots in the middle of the frame. And this raises several questions for the character as the series progresses. Is the intimacy of the close-ups in his headspace symbolising his closeness to the killers? Is he simply engaging with the killer's own comfort in these moments, or is he beginning to succumb to his own dark urges? It's not very smart to piss off a guy who thinks about killing people for a living. 
but Hannibal uses our reliance on this aesthetic change to blur this line even further. In episode 5, Will hallucinates talking to a killer after his apparent suicide, but there's no colour change to signal this. For a moment, it feels like a horrifying reality, and then... Gone. I'm losing my mind. I, I, I don't know what's real. As Will's mind begins to unravel, so too does the narrative. The storytelling warps and changes with its central character because we see every grisly detail of this world through his eyes. No wonder you have nightmares. And now we'll move on to the main course. You reconstruct the thinking of a killer. You don't think of yourself as the killer. Hannibal's most distinctive aesthetic, its frequent gory interludes, is arguably its most impactful. A far cry from other shows that use gore for horror and shock value, the violent imagery in Hannibal serves a narrative purpose. Wow. <laughs> this should be interesting. Please, Doctor, proceed. The gore serves as a fleshy, outward expression of our protagonist's inner turmoil, and the violence escalates as the narrative progresses. The show's premiere opens with, admittedly bloody, but tame by comparison gunshots. The sixth episode features a nurse with her eyes gouged and impaled several times over, and the real kicker, and one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen on TV, is in episode 10 featuring a Glasgow smile and a head split open at the jaw. Yikes. When misery reigns, it pours. This deliberate intensification of violence throughout the first season of Hannibal parallels Will's increasing inner turmoil and descent into madness. The show builds up a collusion between Will and the audience by inviting us into his private headspace where he doesn't let anyone else go. Compare this to Dexter, a show with a similar fascination with serial killers, whose protagonist also reconstructs murders through crime scene analysis. The killer plunged his knife into the shoulder, severing the carotid artery and... That feels totally different to this. I open his throat from the outside to access the trachea and expose the vocal cords. I open his throat from the inside using the neck of a cello. I wanted to play him. I wanted to create a sound. The horror of each scene is strengthened by the fact that we see our supposed hero performing each act of brutality with a quiet reverie, as opposed to an antagonist whose actions are far easier to condemn. Will's mental breakdown is just far easier to believe as we experience the emotional toll firsthand as we are rigidly tied to his perspective. But if we empathise with his feelings of disgust, don't we also get a similar thrill from each kill? You're totally functional and more or less sane. Well done. And with that in mind, does anyone have any room for dessert? If your intention was to kill him, it's because you understand why he did the things he did. It's beautiful in its own way. However terrifying these violent moments are, they are undeniably gorgeous. The camera lingers with morbid fascination on the most horrifying of images, with the hyper-stylist aesthetic of the slow motion. And arguably, elevate them to art. These scenes juxtapose the artistry of the slow-mo with the visceral terror of the action itself. As an audience, we should recoil in horror, but like Will, we see the hypnotic beauty in the violence. Hannibal presents his food in a very similar way. We know that it's people, but you can't deny that everything looks delicious. Who's hungry? <laughs> the presentation of the food and the violence confounds our sense of what's grotesque and what's beautiful. This same presentational flair extends to how Hannibal's killers stage their crimes. Each body might as well be an art installation in the world's most fucked up gallery. It's probably in Amsterdam. From stag-mounted bodies to angels to a goddamn totem pole, every crime scene is a testament to the killer's craft, intended to be admired. There's no accounting for taste or intelligence. The relationship between killers and profiles on the show acts as a metaphor for the relationship between an artist and a patron. When Will puts himself into the shoes of the supposed artist, he always takes a step back to admire his work and announce that This is my design. Because we see this gruesome world through Will's eyes, as an audience we have to ask the same questions of ourselves as we do of Will. Is our revulsion caused by the heinous crimes we witness? Or is it a reaction to our own morbid fascination with the killer's work? We know that Will's a little fucked in the head, but aren't we as well? Well, we have that in common. But in the end, it all comes back to Will. You are obsessed with Will Graham. I'm intrigued. Obsessively. Every aesthetic choice of Hannibal works towards a common goal, creating a mystery around its central character. As our pseudo-narrator, the audience is at the mercy of Will's own perception throughout the show. We are invited into the world of Hannibal through his lens, and it is one that conveys its surroundings with a morbid allure. Every brutal choice has elegance, grace. 
with the artful presentation of the show, we are forced to question where Will stands on the dichotomy between beauty and brutality. And the casual way with which Hannibal plays with the aesthetics of different planes of reality makes it really difficult to answer. Will Graham is constantly at odds with himself throughout the first season of the show, and it's this internal battle that we see externalised in every drop of blood. This nightmare world is one of his own making. This is his design. This is my design. Well, thank you for making it this far, and I apologise in advance for the nightmares you'll be having for the next two to three months. Come on, Will. I need my beauty sleep. If you did enjoy it, liking this video and subscribing to my channel would be a great way to show it. I'm afraid I insist on it. And if you've gone through all that trouble, you might as well follow me on Twitter as well and let me know what you thought there. That may require me to be sociable. And if you think everything I've just said is complete bollocks... Why don't you come up with your own answers if you don't like mine? But this is where I leave you, boys and girls. I'm feeling a little bit hungry. And I think I'm in the mood for some ribs. Bon appétit.